Welcome tonight, and um, we have Dr. Cosby back again for our last series this fall, um, and this will be focused on cattle. So first, we have a few housekeeping rules. Um, be sure that all your lines are muted. If you do have a question towards the end, there's an audio button that you can hit. You can unmute questions, um, or you can always feel free to send them in. If you're joining on audio, you can click on the little audio to the far left. Um, if you have any questions, if you're on a computer at the very bottom of your screen, there'll be a little chat box. If you drop that in the chat box, uh, myself or Christy can see that. And then if you're on a cell phone, you'll go to the three dots on your far right and then go up and click chat and you can type in any chat questions there as well. Um, if you're listening through on Facebook instead of Zoom, just drop your comment or your question in the comment section and we'll be sure to answer it at the end as well. If you're on Facebook or Zoom, please drop a comment. Let us know where you're joining from so we can see which stores are represented tonight for the meeting. So tonight we'll have Dr. N.T. Cosby again, as well as our pre cell specialist, Dr. Christy Keeler. Um, so without further ado, I'll turn it over to Dr. Cosby. Um, we'll be talking about body condition scoring and preparing for our calving season. Thank you, Andy, and I want to thank Farmers Co-op for sponsoring this uh, Cattle Chat series. Um, if, uh, if you've not uh, been on one before, uh, my name is N.T. Cosby. I am the uh, uh, Purina nutritionist that uh, works in uh, Missouri, Arkansas, parts of Oklahoma and Kansas, and I have been with uh, Purina 24 years now, I guess. So, um, as I thought about uh, putting together this, uh, this presentation this evening on uh, cow body condition scoring, I thought, you know, a lot of our uh, students in uh, college, high school, et cetera, are, are nearing the end of the semester. And uh, at some point they're gonna get a final exam and have to take, uh, get their report cards. So that's a little bit like uh, what tonight's program is about when it comes down to it, because uh, I hope to make the case this evening that our cows are going to grade us. Uh, we often talk about uh, we're going to do a cow body condition score evaluation on our cows, but ultimately how those cows look is our scorecard. Uh, they're grading us on how good of a job we're doing, taking care of their nutritional needs. So uh, as we go back through this cattle chat series, uh, one of the first ones we did was on uh, the rumen microbes and the fact that uh, in the ruminant we are uh, actually first and foremost trying to take care of that uh, that rumen population of bacteria protozoa fungi things that digest that fiber and, and make the cow the uh, the uh, amazing animal that uh, that she is and how we can utilize a lot of poor quality foodstuffs to uh, to convert to uh, to beef so we talked a little bit about that and how to uh, feed those animals we talked about the fact that uh, our, our grasses are always changing and our cow requirements are always changing. That uh, in many cases, uh, it's, it's hard to uh, manage by averages and we oftentimes uh, need to uh, incorporate some different programs in order to uh, make sure we're meeting the cow's needs when, uh, when our forages are changing. Uh, Ted Perry, our Director of Technical Services at Purina, gave a presentation in our cattle chat series about all seasons nutrition and, and supplementing cattle with, uh, with products that supply nutrition on a year-round basis, uh, despite the fact that forage is changing, cow requirements are, are always changing. And then uh, today, uh, as we talked about, we're going to get to the point uh, where it's essentially the final exam and, and really, uh, again, we sometimes say we're gonna evaluate cow body condition score, but ultimately our cows are really the uh, providing the scorecard on how good of a job we're doing meeting their nutritional needs based on body condition scoring. So that's what we'll uh, talk tonight. Hopefully uh, make this uh, kind of home, hit home with the importance of it. 
The fact is that uh, body condition scoring affects uh, a whole lot of reproductive fact factors. And uh, starting there on the left, of course, we think that, uh, or no, um, from our own personal experience or university research, what have you, that uh, cows that are in better shape are, are gonna have higher pregnancy rates. But there are other things that go into that as well. Uh, oftentimes um, they're gonna return to heat quicker and have a shorter calving interval, meaning uh, that postpartum interval is shortened. Uh, and we can have older calves that are gonna be heavier at, at weaning. And I'll illustrate that with some data. Uh, certainly uh, reduction in calving difficulty. There's often concerns, especially with first calf heifers, oftentimes that uh, we don't want our first calf heifers to be uh, over conditioned or because it's gonna make a, a calf that's too big. But uh, what the data actually shows is that having cows in the proper body condition score will reduce the incidence of calving problems and in fact, uh, increase the quality and quantity of colostrum and reduce health scores or reduce health issues, excuse me, on those calves after, um, after they hit the ground. So uh, those are certainly uh, interactions between nutrition and, and rebreeding. Um, that healthy calf crop I alluded to just a minute ago, that uh, cows in better shape are gonna have a higher quality and, and better colostrum, uh, which is gonna improve uh, disease prevention on that calf throughout its life. And then lastly, when it comes down to it, uh, and, and some of the last slides I'll show at the end of this presentation will hopefully make this point that if we take care of our cows um, and, and feed them appropriately to keep them in the body condition score, I'll, I'll try to make the case that it's not gonna take you any more feed and may in fact take you less and we can uh, improve your financial viability and better utilization of your resources. In, uh, in managing your cow herd. So just some uh, data to uh, illustrate this and, and uh, this presentation will have some, some data slides, but uh, rest assured I'll also show plenty of pictures of, of cows as well. So it's not gonna be all data, all bunch of numbers. I'll try to break it up a little bit and describe things as we go through. But I did wanna take a, a couple minutes with just some data to illustrate the importance of having cows in the proper body condition score. So on the left side, we have low nutrition, which means cows that started the breeding season at a body condition score 4.9 or just five. And we'll describe as we go through what, what that body condition score is and what that looks like. Uh, but just suffice it to say, that's a little bit low, okay? The moderate nutrition, they started at a body condition score 5.5, and this is on a, a one to nine scale. And you can see the information there that, uh, the blue is days to first estrus, which was reduced 15 days or nearly one cycle. You think, well, that's not a whole lot. That's just a couple of weeks. But uh, actually, if, if calves are gaining two pounds a day, that's 30 pounds of weaning weight that's given up by, uh, by having, a, uh, having that cow slower return to, uh, to estrus. And of course, the increase in pregnancy rate. Now you might say, well, that doesn't seem like much of a difference in, in, in body condition score from essentially a five to a five and a half. Here's what's uh, amazing to me is on cows, a body condition score amounts to about 80 pounds. So from one score to another is 80 pounds of live weight. So at only a half a condition score, that's only 40 pounds. And yet we saw that dramatic of a difference in postpartum interval and breed up. I'll show you another one. Okay, again, more bars, more numbers. Um, bear with me on this. So what this is, is at the bottom you say day 20, day 40, day 60. That's days of the breeding season. So the 20th day, so first cycle, day 40 would be the second cycle roughly, and day 60 would be third cycle. So the chances of those cows to get bred in 60 days of the, uh, of the breeding season. See four, five, six for each one of those. So those are the body condition scores, fours, fives, and sixes. Again, blue bars percent cycling, green bars percent pregnant. When you look at uh, the circles there, those highlighted numbers, when the cows are in a body condition score six at calving, by day, uh, by the first cycle of the uh, breeding season, already nearly half of those cows are bred, and by day. 40, 90% of those cows are bred. Uh, by day 60, essentially have uh, all of those cows bred. Um, 
when, when they calved at a body condition score six. Uh, drop back to a, to a five. So basically, again, just to remind you, that's only about 70 to 80 pounds of live weight difference. By day 60, there was 16% uh, fewer of those cows that, uh, that had uh, conceived and become pregnant. So uh, body condition score is extremely important on uh, getting your cows uh, bred for the next season. And then lastly, the other point I wanna make in terms of the importance of body condition scoring is, is what effect it has on this year's calf. So I've shown you breed up results for, for cows and the importance of having them in the proper body condition score so they can get bred with next year's calf. What about this year's calf? And this is actually a study from Louisiana State University. And believe it or not, they did this on uh, Brahmin cows. And I, I point that out because uh, some poor grad student actually had to uh, milk these cows. So if you can imagine uh, that grad student earning his college assistantship by milking Brahmin cows out every four hours. But uh, essentially what they looked at were cows that were losing weight or cows that were maintaining weight and the amount of milk that was produced every four hours. So you can see there that about a half a pound less milk produced every four hours for cows losing weight. So of course, six times times that half a pound, three pounds less milk, which translated to four pounds less calf daily gain. Uh, translate that out to a 200 day uh, time from birth to weaning. And that could amount to as much as 80 pounds difference in, in weaning weight by having cows uh, in the proper condition uh, at calving and, and up to the breeding period. So it, produ it produces more milk for this year's calf and then again, those cows are gonna be better set up to breed for next year's calf. So I've talked about a little bit about the importance of body condition score. I've thrown some numbers out there at you at four, five, six, et cetera. Uh, it's time now to uh, hopefully get your interest peaked that, that this is important in terms of having our cows in the right condition score. So now we're gonna play a video and illustrate what, uh, what those scores look like and uh, to help us with that is uh, Dr. Elizabeth Backus Blue, one of our uh, technical service nutritionists. Hi, everyone. My name is Elizabeth Backus Blue, and today we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about cow body condition score. We know that good looking cows breed back better, and really to establish a good body condition scoring method is relatively easy. Uh, just takes a little bit of time driving through your cows and, and really establishing what their condition is at given times across the year. For those of you that aren't as familiar with the body, body condition score method, it is a one to nine score where a one score cow would be very emaciated, real thin, and a body condition score nine cow would be severely obese. So when we think about where to look at on a cow, we evaluate five areas. And those five areas include the ribs, what that fat deposition looks like across the rib area. The second area we look at is what is the um, cover or the fat deposition along her back line or her top line? The third place we look is whether or not she has tail head fat. Additionally, we look at the muscling in the shoulders and hind quarters. And then lastly, we evaluate how much fat deposition there is uh, in, the, in the brisket area. Dr. Lee Dickerson, one of our cattle consultants that covers the Southeast, has put together a nice uh, refresher of what the different scores look like based on what the five areas look like. When we think about a body condition score three to eight, several different things change as we gain body condition score. For instance, at a body condition score three, all of the ribs are gonna be uh, clearly visible. Um, you're gonna be able to see each vertebrae along the backbone so you can count those different uh, vertebrae. When we think about um, you know, the, the tail head fat, that cow is not going to have any tail head fat. Uh, she's going to have significant muscle loss in her shoulders and hind quarters and no brisket fat. But if we think about moving to a body condition score four, four and a half, uh, that cow is going to look a little bit different. Um, all the ribs are still going to be visible. 
okay? Um, you're not gonna be able to see each individual vertebrae. She's gonna be more cupped along her backbone and then tail head fat, uh, muscle in shoulders and hind quarters and brisket fat are gonna look pretty similar to a body condition score three cow. When we move to a body condition score five cow, this is where we're gonna see about two to three ribs, okay? She's going to be more angular across her backbone instead of that cupping that we see on a body condition score four and a half. Um, she's not gonna have any tail head fat, still gonna have muscle loss in her shoulders and hind quarters and no brisket fat. When we move to a body condition score six, this one's the real uh, differentiated one um, and you can really easily tell as you're moving from a five to a six. On a body condition score six, you will see no ribs. So previously, we saw at least two to three ribs on a body condition score six. You're not gonna see any ribs. She's gonna be round across her top line. She's gonna have uh, minimal tail head fat. She's gonna have good appearance in her shoulders and hind quarters. And then lastly, minimal brisket fat. When we get to above six, uh, their, their backbone is gonna look a little bit different. They're gonna be more square across their backbone, more tail head fat, no rib showing, um, and start to have some deposition in, in the uh, brisket area. So what we're gonna do now is we are going to actually look at some cows. I got some cows behind me, and we're gonna evaluate their body condition score and work through some of these key areas that we just previously discussed. To start things out, we're gonna start at lower body condition scores and work our way up to a higher body condition score. So E102 cow right here that we have um, would be one of those lower score body conditioned cows. Uh, I would call her a four and a half uh, and for several reasons. So if you look at her, um, her rib cage, you can see at least four to five ribs. Additionally, if you look at her uh, top line, she does have that cupping along, uh, along her top line. Um, and you know, not a lot of fat deposition there. She has no tail head fat, so um, no deposition there. Muscle loss in her shoulders and hind quarters. And additionally, no brisket fat. So I would call her around a four, four and a half body condition score for those reasons. As we move to the other cow in the, pas in the pen, uh, E94, we have a little bit different appearance and, and I would call her around a body condition score five. Uh, if you pay particular attention to her top line, she's more angular in her top line compared to the, the previous score cow. Uh, you can see two to three ribs um, on her, no tail head fat. Um, you know, looks looks a little bit better in the muscles and uh, the muscling in her shoulders and hind quarters, but uh, no no um, brisket fat. And what's really important about a body condition score five is that is the condition we want her to be at at weaning. Okay, we want her no less than a body condition score five at weaning, um, because. You know, she's got a couple months to put on some condition to get to a body condition score six to calve in, and we wanna make sure that she has enough time to do that. And so, uh, no less than a body condition score five when we wean those calves off of her. As we move from a body condition score five to a body condition score six, we have a great example of what a good body condition score six cow looks like behind me. Uh, when we think about the major differences again, when a body condition score six, you're not gonna be able to see any ribs. So on this girl behind me, I don't see any ribs showing, so I know she's at least a body condition score six. If we pay attention to her top line, she's more round, whereas the previous cows had more angularity to their top line. So when we talk about a body condition score six, no ribs showing, smooth across her top. Uh, she looks good in her muscles, uh, in the muscling in her shoulders and hind quarters. Um, she might be putting on a little bit of tail head fat uh, and middle, minimal brisket fat, but a good looking body condition score six cow uh, that we have here. When we think about the importance of a body condition score six, this is really where we want cows to be at, at calving. And we're gonna talk a little bit about um, the statistics and the data behind that here in a little bit, but we know that good looking cows produce better colostrum uh, calves stand quicker after birth. A um, lot of really key important things that, that are affected 
by what score she calves in. So remember, a body condition score six is where we want her to be at when she calves. This is really, really important for first calf heifers, especially. Those first calf heifers have a lot going on. They are um, still growing, they're losing teeth, now they're going to be lactating, um, and we want them to get rebred in a timely fashion. And so when we think about all of those biological functions, reproduction is gonna be at the bottom if we don't keep her in good condition. So pay particular attention to your first calf heifers and, and what body condition score they're in, because again, we want them to stay in the herd for a long time and we need to make sure she calves in at least a body condition score six. Moving up to the higher body condition scores, I have a, a, a cow here behind me that's probably at least a body condition score seven. Uh, some notable features about her, um, obviously you can't see any ribs, right? So we know she's greater than six. Um, her back line, she's gonna be more square, okay? So she's got more deposition across her back line. Additionally, if you look at the tail head region, she's got a lot of fat deposition um, around that tail head and her pones, um, good cover there. Looks really good, smooth across the muscling in, in her shoulders and hind quarters. And she is starting, you know, has that brisket fat appearance as well. Um, so really good body condition score seven cow behind me. An important thing about, you know, these larger score cows, uh, you know, she can maintain her body condition score at this at this size and. Uh, you don't necessarily need to feed to a body condition score seven as long as she's raising a big calf and can keep good condition. Uh, there's, there's no reason not to let her to get to a body condition score seven, but I would really encourage you guys to um, you know, evaluate her productivity, calf weaning weights and such um, as we get into these bigger score cows. Earlier in my session, I mentioned that there was Okay, so uh, Dr. Backus went through the, uh, the condition scores. Um, most of your cows are gonna be in the uh, four, fives, and sixes um, in, in your herd. Uh, and she talked about that a, a four is, is too thin. Uh, a five is the target at, uh, at weaning, no less than that. And a uh, body condition score six is ideal at calving. Uh, and you know, we'd all like to have all our cows look like uh, like this one standing here. You know, clear body condition score five and a half to six. Um, good udder, obviously milking well, standing knee deep in uh, in green grass like that. But the reality is, uh, this is most of what our herds look like, and it's a and it's a continuum of this cow here in the front that uh, I think we would after listening to that video describe her as a uh, body condition score four. You can see her uh, point of her shoulder there a little bit. Uh, you're starting to see that cupping along her backbone, uh, loss of muscle in the top of her neck uh, and uh, in, her, in her hind quarters. So we've all got those cows at condition score four. And then over here, two cows to the left, we've got one that uh, from what we can tell there probably looks more like a condition score five. I uh, can see a little bit of the top of her rib there, no fat around her tail head, anything like that. A little bit of angularity over her top. And then here in the middle, we've got the condition score six, uh, smooth over the top, a little bit of uh, tail head fat you can see there. So in reality, those are our herds, right? So how do we, uh, it's impossible to get them all to the same point, but uh, we need to think about uh, distribution within our herd of, uh, of those condition scores. And, and when we start to see uh, a distribution change one, one direction or other, we know uh, we can make some, make some changes. What I mean by that is, now for example, on that previous slide, if, if a third of our cows were fours, a third were fives, and a third were sixes, uh, the mathematical average has to be a condition score five, right? So we'd say, hey man, we're doing great. We're, uh, we've got uh, our cows are all averaging a body condition score five, but the fact of the matter is they're equally distributed before, between four, fives, and sixes. And I would argue uh, that, that we need to know more than just the average. For example, 
uh, first off, you don't need a lot of complicated tools to go condition score your cows. Get out there, uh, drive through the pastures or when you're feeding them and, and you've got them lined up, just go through and, and make marks like this um, across, uh, across the top of your big chief tablet and, and score, the, score the cows. And in this particular ranch example, basically 75% uh, of the cows were fives and sixes, had a few fours and a few sevens on, on either end of that. Um, and again, so that's going to be an, an average close to uh, uh, a little over a, a five. But that tells me a lot more information. It tells me I've got maybe a, a few of those cows at the top end that uh, Dr. Back has talked about that uh, maybe they're in such good shape because they're not weaning a very good calf, or maybe they're just really easy doing kind of cows, or maybe they haven't calved yet. If I've got uh, you know those fours at the other end, I might look at those. Are those my older cows? Are those uh, the younger cows? Do they have some health issues, uh, lameness problems? What's going on with those condition score fours? So it, uh, it's more than an average. And, and I would encourage you to, uh, when you condition score cows, to break things out like this uh, so that you can identify maybe some trends that are going on, especially as you make changes in nutrition, so you can identify if the trends are going in the right way. Are we pulling more of those fours to fives? Are we pulling more of those fives to sixes ahead of the calving season? And it can be a very valuable tool from a management standpoint. So again, just to reiterate, our score targets are a body condition score uh, six at calving, a five at weaning, and at any time, a body condition score four cow simply is, uh, is just too thin. Uh, it's a lot of nutrition to play catch up to get her uh, up to a body condition score five or six. I'm going to talk a little bit about now uh, when we know that uh, or notice that we need to make some supplementation changes because uh, maybe we've got a, uh, a few too many of those fours in our herd and uh, we're maybe getting close to uh, to uh, calving for example or, or now we go out and we condition score our cows and now is a great time to do that because a lot of you on your spring calving herd um, you're going to be uh, maybe calving those cows and uh, in the next 45 to 60 days. So now would be a great time to condition score your spring calving cows because it's gonna give us enough time to get them back into shape. Your fall calving cows, uh, probably this week, uh, in actuality, you're gonna be putting uh, bulls in with them uh, to rebreed your fall calving cows. So uh, we're a little bit behind the eight ball if we need to make up some uh, body condition on those cows. And I'll, I'll show that again at the end of the uh, presentation. So. For your spring calving cows, think right now that now is the perfect time to body condition score and determine your supplementation needs. And I want to want to illustrate here is a scout was telling us, feed me now or feed me later. Um, that uh, it's going to take some nutrition, and now is the best time to do that if we need to pick up some body condition score. I show this slide oftentimes when I talk uh, about developing heifers, and the reason I do is uh, that that. Uh, that young cow there, and, and most producers would agree that that's a relatively young cow, probably still growing in fact. Got a calf there that's 45 to 60 days of age. So she's a young cow, peak lactation, bulls are probably gonna be turned in on uh, for rebreeding here soon. And you look at that forage and it's a little sparse. It looks pretty good, but there doesn't look to be a whole lot of it. So when we take all the facts into consideration, we've got a young cow that's still growing, at her highest point of requirements in, in her lifetime, peak lactation, on forage that uh, is probably lacking in quantity. And I ask this question of, of producers in the audience, and I say, how many of you think this cow is losing weight? And most of the folks in that uh, audience will typically raise their hand and say, yeah, with, with the facts that we know, we would suspect this cow is losing weight. And that next question I ask is, but how many of you are going to feed her? And surprisingly, most hands go down. And the reason is it's just human nature because she looks good today. And, and we don't uh, think we need to feed her, even though when we go through the facts at hand, we know in our heart of hearts that, that cow's losing weight. Let me give you another example. Okay, we look at these cows. Obviously, uh, the pasture's just a little bit short there. And you look at the trees. Uh, I don't think anybody's been out there uh, clipping those bottom branches. I'd say the, the cows have kind of got a browse line. They, they've kind of cleaned out the bottom branches. Uh, they've got that uh, grass clipped off there pretty short. 
But you look at the cows and you say, you know what, they're not in, in, in too bad a shape. Even though we know, looking at this scenario, those cows are probably losing weight. But again, our, our, uh, our human nature looks at us and says, man, that short grass, it must really have some power to it. Not like that tall washy grass stuff. Um, that's what we tell ourselves. But the fact is those cows are losing weight and they need some supplementation. And the time to do it is before you actually notice your cows are losing weight. And I'll try to make that uh, point. I guess what I'm saying is, especially on your spring calving cows, is, is don't wait to start supplementing those cows. Get out there and body condition score them. And if you truly need some nutrition, don't wait. Now, I told you I've been with Karina 24 years and I've heard, I've heard all the excuses as to why we're gonna wait to start supplementing cows. Well, they look good right now, or I've got plenty of fall grass, or uh, boy, I've got plenty of hay, so I, I don't need to start buying a lot of feed. Uh, maybe you're, you're just too busy, or, uh, or this one. Uh, you could certainly look at me and, and say, you know what, you're selling feed. It's going to cost me too much to start now. Uh, I understand how you could have that perception. I'll try to dispel that here in a minute. Or you might say, I, there's no way we can have another rough, wet winter like we did last year. So I know there's a lot of reasons out there to wait on supplementing your cows, but if they truly need it based on body condition score, don't wait. Now, we've talked about the importance in terms of getting them rebred and getting them rebred in a timely manner. So. The key to doing that is having them at the proper body condition score at calving, which again is a body condition score six. So here's some data. And, and what this is, is this, you can see the top September and December. So these cows, uh, in the September cows, they had their calves weaned off in September, and then they were either supplemented, which was yes, or not supplemented, which is no, from September through December. Okay, so let's just look at that. So calves weaned off, so dry cow, not supplemented, she gained 45 pounds. Okay, so basically uh, 45 pounds gained from September through November without any supplement. When they supplemented the cows, she gained 80 pounds, okay, 79 pounds. And then you look below there at the cow body condition score. Now you might say, well, Cosby, a minute ago, you told us that a cow body condition score is about 80 pounds. Uh, so why in that cow gain a full body condition score? Or that cow that gained 45, she should have picked up at least a half a condition score. Why didn't she only pick up two tenths? Well, remember these cows are dry, but they are carrying next year's calf. So a lot of that weight change is actually uh, that calf uh, growing as well as uh, of course the, uh, all the uh, uh, pregnancy uh, uh, in the placenta, et cetera, is, is growing. So the weight changes don't directly correspond here to body condition score, but the point is they gain weight from September through November. Now, what was compared here? So here, December is calves that were left on those cows from September through December. So these cows are still lactating. And again, were they supplemented with an energy supplement or not? So. If those cows had calves on them and were not supplemented, they lost 33 pounds and one condition score. If they were supplemented, but still had calves on them, they basically maintained their weight, but lost condition. So again, think about these cows here, December, lactating, not getting any supplement, they lost weight. So now we're starting to affect next year's calf that isn't even born yet, quite honestly. Uh, as well as that cow's ability to, to uh, breed back. And even when the cows were supplemented, we didn't do a very good job holding condition on those cows. So when it's time to wean, it's time to wean. That certainly uh, uh, gives us a chance to get those cows back into shape. All right, so told you there would be some numbers in here. Here's, uh, here's kind of what I put together to make the case of if you if we need to put some condition score on cows, especially our spring calvers, now is the time to do that. So I've got uh, a 1,300 pound cow here, body condition score five at weaning, which as you recall, that's our target. Okay, so she's right where we want her. Now, we're gonna start feeding her some hay. And our hay is 54% uh, TDN, and that cow can eat roughly 2% of her body weight of that, so 26 pounds. So she's gonna get 14 pounds of TDN from that forage. Now she's in her last third of gestation, 
So I need to deliver to her 15 pounds of TDM for her to gain that one body condition score. So I need her to gain about 80 pounds in roughly 60 to 80 days. So about a pound a day is what I need her to gain, okay? So right, she needs 15. She's only getting 14 from my forage. She's a pound short. So I'm gonna supplement her with a pound and a half of a grain mix for 60 days, get her in shape. That's 90 pounds of supplement. Once she calves, her requirements go up to 17 pounds. Now she's lactating. So now it's gonna take three pounds of that same supplement, or that same hay. And I'm gonna feed that 90 days so I've got plenty of good green grass and going into the breeding season. So 90 days of that. That's 270 pounds. So I'm going to feed my cow 150 days and she's going to need 360 pounds of supplement starting early. Okay. What's the other option? That same cow, same assumption on TDN of the forage and how much she can eat. Her last third requirements, 15 pounds. Remember that everything's the same as, as previously. But now we decide, you know what? She's a five. She's not in too bad a shape. Uh, and I've got plenty of hay. I'll just make sure she's got plenty of hay to eat. What's going to happen? She can only eat so much of that hay. She's not going to gain that condition score she needs to get her to a body condition score six at calving. So in the 60 days before she, uh, she calves, chances are she's probably going to lose a half a body condition score. Because remember, she gets closer to calving. Her requirements are going up. We're just giving her hay, which we know is, is short on nutrition. So now she calves, all of a sudden she drops that calf and we start looking at her and we realize, my goodness, I can, I can count five ribs on her. Uh, I, I know that's a body condition score four to four and a half and she's supposed to be a, a six and I got to pick her up in order to get her, have a chance to rebreed her. Well, the problem is we're trying to gain weight on a lactating cow in, uh, in late winter, early spring, think about the weather then, it's gonna take a whole lot of feed. In fact, somewhere around 19 to 20 pounds of TDN or about eight to 10 pounds of that grain mix a day. And so if I do the math in 90 days, it's gonna take 700, over 750 pounds of grain mix to get her in shape, to have a good chance of getting her rebred uh, this coming breeding season. So when we put all that together, Start now, start get taking care of your cows. A little bit now will go a long ways later. Uh, that cow's gonna be at a body condition score six at calving, it's took that 360 pounds. I put a 15 cents a pound, just uh, the ballpark of cost. And so that's $54 a feed cost I've got in my cow versus 90 days, we think we're saving money, but if we truly try to get those cows back in shape, we just cost ourselves $60 because it takes so much more feed once they've calved out and are lactating and trying to put that weight back on. So if you hear nothing else on, uh, on this presentation, um, get out there, condition score your cows, uh, start uh, looking at uh, your forages and determining, and, and we're certainly willing, able, and, and love to work with you on this, identify where you may be short, and uh, for example, that condition score uh, five cow at, at weaning and 60 to 90 days prior to calving, maybe a pound of TDN short here is a great option with your rangeland tubs. Cows are gonna eat somewhere uh, three quarters of a pound a day of, of that tub, uh, which is very high energy. And it's also going to uh, encourage more forage intake and digestibility. So on those cows that are just a little bit short based on your hay, uh, don't short them, get a, get a cook tub out there uh, as an option if, uh, if hand feeding isn't uh, something you want to consider. Uh, other options, and, and you're fortunate here to work with uh, Farmers Co-op because they offer every supplementation method that, that Purina has available. So liquid is another option. If you have plenty of forages here, we, uh, we can utilize the, uh, the liquid to, de to deliver that nutrition as well. Basically, uh, we, we figure about uh, 25 cows per wheel. So one tank can uh, service quite a few cows. Uh, our accuration blocks, another option for you. The difference of these versus the rangeland tubs is intake will be more variable. So they could eat as little as uh, three quarters to uh, one pound when, when requirements are low to as much as three and a half. 
with the cook tubs, they're going to top out at about uh, one pound a day with the accuration blocks. A lot of folks like those because they'll eat roughly a pound, pound and a half now. And as they get close to calving and after calving, they'll move up to two and a half and three and we'll be able to keep those cows in shape. And then lastly, uh, the accuration or cattle limiter program that's fed through a bulk feeder. Where we use this program uh, a lot is on uh, first calf heifers. Dr. Backus Blue talked about the uh, challenge with getting those young cows rebred uh, very often. If you have the ability to separate out your young cows, we'll use these accuration cattle limiter mixes through a bulk feeder for the fine 60 day window for the most bang for the buck to get your young cows bred. So we have a lot of options available to you. Of course, uh, Farmers Co-op has the, uh, the bulk mill as well with a tremendous uh, listing of bulk ingredients and then bag supplements we can put to that. And uh, as the nutritionist that supports uh, their cattle business, I'm certainly uh, willing and, and glad to help, uh, help them work with their ingredients to, uh, to meet what you need to uh, take care of your cows. And then lastly, uh, don't, don't overlook uh, mineral programs, the uh, cornerstone of the good quality nutrition program. And so the, the mineral we're recommending this time of year would be either, either that red bag wind and rain all season seven and a half complete, or for some of you that uh, may wanna look at uh, an organic trace mineral, we'll, rec we'll recommend the wind and rain all season available for mineral. So with that, I want to wrap up and just uh, say that uh, we talked some about the importance of body condition scoring your cows, that uh, we do the evaluation, but ultimately our cows are really grading us on how good of a job we're doing from a management standpoint of meeting their needs and giving them every opportunity to be, uh, to be productive. And, and when we do that, uh, they'll wean good calves, they'll breed back timely, and they uh, will certainly help uh, improve the uh, sustainability and profitability of your operation. Thank you again for the opportunity and uh, to talk on these uh, cattle chat series. I've certainly enjoyed it and I would, would love to take any questions at this time. So Indy, I had a couple of questions that came across. Um, can you kind of go back and um, clarify when we're talking about body condition scoring and the effects on the reproduction performance for us? Okay, um, yeah, the, what the, the big things that happen are uh, the cows that are thin will have a slower return to estrus. In other words, a longer postpartum interval just uh, takes longer, it requires some energy to uh, uterine involution and to basically heal up from having one calf before uh, they're ready to cycle and, and uh, conceive with the next one. So if they are short on energy, uh, that's going to extend that period. Egg quality will be less when they do cycle, so that it'll take another service or two to get them stuck, essentially. Um, and, uh, and we won't have as many bred within a defined time period. So uh, not only is it not as many bred, but it's not as many bred in a timely manner as well. Andy, did you have a question that came across as well? Yes. So as a producer, um, if they have a cow, some cows that are at, say, a four and a half or five body condition score, and they're one during, you know, do I go with the 14% or a 20% cube, what's the best route as far as feeding? How would they come? Andy, I'm, I'm having a lot of trouble uh, getting that. I heard 20% cube, but I didn't know what we were comparing to. I may be staticky here. Well, you were much better right then, Andy. I guess uh, while uh, Andy's getting back online, I, one thing that, that I think, and, and if you were with us a couple weeks ago when we talked about uh, the bulk feed, um, is there's somewhat of a misperception that a higher protein means uh, feed is, is more energy. 
And that's not necessarily the case. So uh, oftentimes when we're trying to pick up condition score on our cows, what we really need is, is energy. And so a lower protein feed would actually be of more benefit than a higher protein feed. So let me give you an example. So let's say you can feed a 14% grain mix or a 20% grain mix. If you feed uh, three pounds of that 20% grain mix, now we're gonna get six, ten six uh, tenths of a pound of protein. Of that 14, if I fed four pounds times 14%, that's 0.56 pounds of protein. So essentially the same amount of protein, but I'm delivering another pound of energy. So it's not only the percent protein, but also the fed rate that needs to be considered. And as we in, uh, increase fed rate to put energy into cows and, and uh, increase their condition score, we can often save some money by dropping back on the protein. So we'll still deliver as much protein, but we're gonna deliver in this case, actually uh, about 25% more energy by dropping back to a 14 and feeding it at four pounds. So Annie has texted me and you touched on exactly what she was trying to ask NT. So okay, we great. appreciate that. So um, she's got a little bit of a rainstorm coming through. So her yeah. service is cutting out quite a bit. So um, I had another one that came across here as well is when we start seeing our cows kind of slip back in that body condition score, is there kind of a rule of thumb of how far behind we might be on them cows from a day standpoint? Are we 30, 45 days behind on getting them from some protein supplementation? Yeah, when, when we start to notice cows are, uh, are thin, um, oftentimes, yeah, it's too late. <laughs> well, I shouldn't say too late. It's, uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be hard to catch them up at that point, depending on the time of year, especially. Because uh, we talked about a half a condition score and, and the fact that it's only about 40 pounds and the dramatic effect it can have on uh, reproductive success. So. Uh, that's why it's important, I think, for, to do a couple things. One, regularly condition score your cows. And by regularly, uh, get out there every month or so. And, and, uh, and, but really look at them at key times, especially like your, your spring calving cows now 60 days ahead. Uh, you don't want to try and have to feed a cow more than uh, to gain more than about a pound a day when she's dry. That's uh, just too much feed and too much cost. So give yourself plenty of time, uh, which means condition score your cows. The other thing is uh, have other people come out and condition score with you. Um, I know uh, Christy would be uh, willing to do, do some of that as well. And, and the reason I say that is, is get uh, some other folks out to look at them is because I'm going to venture to say most folks listening in on this call have made this statement. Uh, tell me what you think of my cow shoot. I see them every day. And what that means is, uh, you know, they're just the obvious. So we, uh, we don't always, uh, it's, e it's easy to, for things to slip up on us. So get another set of eyes out there. And then the third thing is I have a good understanding of your forages um, and where it is uh, meeting their needs or not meeting their needs. So if we know it's not meeting their needs, we can be uh, proactive and go ahead and start supplementing before the cows are telling us, before the cows are evaluating our inability to, uh, to take care of. Perfect. So um, that's what I've got at this time. I don't see anything. So I'd like to kind of run through a little bit of more information for you guys on um, where you can go. Um, for those of you guys that are joining us tonight is um, we've got the opportunity for you to get a $10 off coupon to take into any of your farmer co-op locations. So if you pull out your phone, your cell phone, and you text Purina um, to 95323, that'll send you over a link. And then we'll click on that link and select A and then go to Arkansas. And then tonight we'll be using the Farmers Cooperative Springdale Checkerboard Day um, um, event. Just to let you know, you will have access to this for about 48 hours. Um, you will receive an email back that will give you an opportunity to print off a $10 off coupon to take in to any of the 15 retail store locations 
across western Arkansas and then into eastern Oklahoma. And as NT had mentioned earlier, um, my name is Christy Keeler, and I am the cell specialist for Purina that works with Farmers Cooperative in all of their locations. So if there's anything that I can do for you folks, um, if you've never fed Purina feed before and you've got some interest, drop into the stores. They know how to get a hold of me, and we can talk about that. So we do offer some um, feeding challenges. And so with that, guys, I want to run through one more time as we're going to text Purina. Um, the number that, that would go to is 95323. Then A and then Arkansas. And then tonight's event is the Farmers Co op Springdale Checkerboard Days. So that'll get you your $10 off coupon that you can print off and then take into any of the 15 retail locations. So um, I know that we've been running chat time. Um, Cattle Chat was started in August. We've been doing these about every other week on a Tuesday night at seven o'clock. Um, so if you guys have missed some of this or you want to go back and kind of relook at some of the information as it's kind of been spread out since August. And Dr. Cosby, we really appreciate you taking the time and all the other speakers that we've had on, taking the time to join us as um, we've explored this virtual lifestyle here with the current um, situation with COVID. So we can jump on to the Farmer Co-op um, Facebook page and that will show you where the events are setting at. Also, um, some of us are unaware that the Farmers Co-op actually does have a YouTube channel and all of those videos set there. So, and that handle for that YouTube is Farmers, plural, Cooperative Van Buren. So that'll give you an opportunity to go back um, and re-listen to some of those. I myself will sometimes go back and listen or you can jump on the Farmer Co-op um, website. And I've got up here, how do we go and look at those videos? So we appreciate um, our agency that runs the website and the social media page for us for taking the time to get this put together. But if you go to that Farmer Co-op website, um, you'll go to About, and that'll give you videos and then they're, they've grouped those into three segments for us. Um, our Purina, the Purina equine chats that we've been doing on Thursday nights, and then our little bit of wildlife and aquatic information that we had discussed, and then our nine series um, that we've been covering on the cattle chat with Dr. Cosby, Dr. Elizabeth Backus Blue, and Dr. or Dr. Uh, Jonathan the clerk and Ted Perry was on. So um, with that being said, we're going to kind of call for last round of questions. So in case if we are catching this on our live stream on the Facebook, um, we do really appreciate you folks for joining us during um, the last few months on these virtual events. My cell phone number is listed here. If you guys would like for me to come out and take a look at your cattle, do some body condition scoring, um, help making some protein supplement recommendations, et cetera, like that, you can reach me at 830-330-0902 or um, feel free to email me. And that's Keeler K-E-E-L-E-R, at landolakes.com. So um, with that, we really appreciate you guys taking the time to join us. Dr. Cosby, we appreciate you. I know you've been kind of our main ca cattle guy during these um, last few months, and it really means a lot to us to have you join us. So um, we wish you guys a happy Thanksgiving as well, and um, a Merry Christmas. It's going to be here in just a few weeks. So guys, with this, we're going to sign off on Cattle Chat. Um, for the year of 2020, and we'll um, stay tuned on what our events are going to look like for 2021. So don't hesitate to jump on that Farmer Co-op website, and all of our events um, going into the future for our future meetings will be listed there. So, MT, we appreciate you so much. Thank you all. Happy Thanksgiving. Thanks, guys.